I'll be speaking about Mizuho brushes tonight. I have a lot to say, so hopefully I'll go through this really quickly. I don't have that many Mizuho brushes, so I figured I'd talk about them in this video. And Mizuho has five lines on the CD Japan website and released their Shakuda line last year, which they made their signature line and is only sold in Japan. Side note, the Shakuda ferrules and handles are made out of walnut wood and cost a lot more than the rest of the Mizuho lines. Since there aren't that many reviews on Mizuho brushes, I never went out of my way to buy them, even though I really wanted to try their eyeshadow blending brush on the left right here. When I first got into Fude, the, um, the sales CD Japan had on Koyudo placed them at a higher priority to purchase than any other brush, so I, I do have a lot of Koyudo brushes. Uh, I have tried five brushes from Mizuho. These four and the CMP521, which is a soft and dense large eyeshadow brush made out of pony hair. I really liked that brush and in retrospect should have kept it for highlighting but figured my e.l.f. $1 eyeshadow brush was good enough. Um, that would be that brush, the brush right here. It's it's just like your, it's like your regular e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. I've had this since high school. Um, the Mizuho one is larger and denser than the elf, the elf version, so I highly recommend the Mizuho one. And next, I have my favorite blending brush of the moment, the CMP527, which is this one. The handles from the CMP line are all black, lightweight, and made out of wood. And uh, I believe this is the most popular brush from Mizuho and retails 2,200 yen which is currently $19 and 11 US dollars. I mean, 19 dollars and 11 cents in US dollars. Um, so as you can see, the brush says Mizuho brush. It's a matte handle and a matte ferrule black, very sleek looking, it says made in Japan on the back, lightweight. At first I thought this was like, I don't know, just like plastic that had matte paint on it but it's actually made out of wood which is surprising and yeah i'm a I, i'm a fan of the, the handles um i didn't think i would like it when i saw it on the website but when i saw when i actually like touched it and felt it in person i actually do really like it anyways um this brush is made out of gray, gray scroll and pony hair i was scared that the pony hair would be scratchy since it's a brush i'd have to use perpendicularly and not on the side like the like the uh, the Mizuho version of this brush, like this one would be used on the side like this, right? Um, I I typically wouldn't use like a flat brush like perpendicularly, um, unless it was the Hokodo GS1 or like a gray scroll version like the Hakuhodo G5523. Um, anyways, yeah, so I was scared that this would be scratchy, but it's actually not scratchy at all. Like. When I go like this, it's not scratchy. So that's good. And it's quite soft and isn't prickly. I just said that. It just, it, to me, it just feels like a springy gray scroll blending brush. And, <laughs> excuse me, that's really good because the, I think the spring, springier the brush for blending, the better, especially for gray scroll. Mine is, uh, if you can see here, hard to tell. I guess this is the best way to tell. Mine is very tapered and pointy, which I like for my smaller eyes to blend precisely. Um, since each brush, let me put this back down. So since each brush is handmade, there will be variances in the ex exact shape that you get. I've seen someone else's and theirs is a lot more rounded at the top and has a fluffier body. So so theirs actually look like the Wayne Goss 3, like this. So just fluffier overall and um, not pointed, just like very circular at the top. And um, the pony hair gives it a lot more resistance than a full gray scroll blending brush like the Hakuhodo S142BK or the Wingoss 4 and the closest shapes I have are actually those two um not those two I mean the Hakuhodo S12 one 
S142BK and the J5522. So I also have the Wangos 4 and the Wangos 3 to compare them with. So let me just put them down here. Uh, how do I do this? Okay, so here is the S142BK, Wangos 4. Crap, it's like really hard to do this. Sorry. Okay, they're just rolling around like crazy, so Wayne Goss 3 and the J5522. Um, so the Mizuho's shape and blending ability is somewhere in between the two right here. The S. Okay, let me just. I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so. Yeah, it's in between these two, the S142BK and the J5522. And the obviously the Wayne, I mean, yeah, so obviously the Wayne Goss 04 is the exact same brush as the one Hakuhodo 142BK, so I'm not going to bother bringing that up right here and now because it looks better with three brushes. Um, yeah, so it... The Mizuho one isn't a strong blender, like a brush completely made out of goat hair, like this one on the right here, and won't blend as softly as one made completely out of squirrel hair, just um, like this one on the left here. It's just somewhere in between, like in the middle. And I really love this brush and, and, and am considering a backup. Like, it's, it is definitely, it definitely made its way up into like my into one of my top uh, blending brushes. So let me just, okay, this is the annoying part. Gotta get it all out. Okay, and then reorganize. Okay, so the next brush we have is the second one right here. This is the MB124 and retails 1800 yen, which is currently $15.64. It's made out of pony hair. It's short, stubby, and pointed. So I'm going to focus this here. You can see that. These, uh, let me just grab my, the closest ones I have are the RMK pencil brush on the left here, and the Hakuhodo Kokutan tea brush on the right here. So uh, the Koktan, I know, varies in shape as well because people, uh, someone else I know, her Koktan is actually pointier. Mine's very, very rounded. So yeah, these are the closest brushes that I have to the Mizuho one in the middle. And then I'll take them out. And um, this is this brush is soft for the most part, but can feel a little pricky on my sensitive eyelids at times. I tried, uh, so let's see. I tried applying my outer V color with this brush and like the usual way by sweeping back and forth, but it seemed to share out when I did that. So I found, I found that um, patting with this brush is the best way to use it. So, and what's interesting is when I would sweep back and forth, it would apply a second shadow of color further out on my eye, which was strange and the first time I'd ever like experienced anything like that. So it's hard to explain, but um, so let's say like I'm trying to just, you know, apply a little bit of V color on the outer V of my eyelid. And then, and so like, let's say like I'm applying here and then it would apply kind of like a second not a layer, but like just like a softer second part, almost as if this was like flicking it out, like like I had like a second version of this, but applied softer. So that's what okay, that's what I was trying to say. So that was that was very strange. Um, I'll be uh, I'll be testing this out with color pop shadows next, but I doubt it'll work because I've yet to find a brush to apply the outer V portion of my color pop shadow nicely. 
if you know of any brush that will apply ColourPop shadows in the outer corner sharply and very pigmentedly on small eyes, do let me know. And lastly, I do want to say that you can also use this for your lower lash line and inner corner highlight and with liquid and cream products because it's made out of resilient pony hair. So next up is the, uh, I'm going to be over nice, sorry, my OCD, yes, okay. Um, this third one right here is the MB120. It retails 2,900 yen, which is currently $25.19. It's made out of pine squirrel hair, and it's large. It's a large tapered eyeshadow brush that is a tad less soft than the Koyudo BP35, also made out of pine squirrel, and the Hokodo GS1, which is made out of Canadian squirrel. Um, Canadian squirrel. So I will pull those two out and compare them for you. The Mizuho one is in the middle. Um, and okay, so oh, I forgot to mention that the um, the MB series all have like this silver, this matte silver ferrule, and the matte black handle, and it's like pointed at the tip as opposed to the MB series that is a. Uh, or, oh wait, as opposed to the CMP series, which is rounded on the bottom, so you can see that. And um, I feel like the, let me put this down. I feel like, no, they weigh about the same. Okay, anyways, that's that's just one little thing I forgot to mention, and I will compare them now with the Kogudo BP35 and the Hokodo GS1. This is like really hard to, to hold because the two brushes on the right are like a lot bigger. Anyways, as you can see here, um, the Koyudo hairs are a little... Okay, let me, I can't, I can't do this with three. I gotta take it down. Okay, Koyudo hairs are, they seem to be like a little more yet brown, like orangey almost. Um, yeah, a little darker. And then the, uh, the Mizuho ones are like more yellow and yeah these are the same exact hair type so that's just very interesting and then we have the Canadian squirrel on the right which is the most gold haired or most I don't even know how to describe it it's like the brightest but it's not yellow okay I'm confusing myself now anyways I digress um the uh, let me so so the one so Koyudo, okay, so in terms of softness, it's, I already talked about that, but just visually, if you want to see, crap. <laughs> um, it's the Canadian Squirrel one, then it's the Koyudo BP35, and then it's this one, the Mizuho one. So, um, it's still soft enough for sensitive skin and there's, I don't feel any, any scratchiness whatsoever. The taper makes it better for applying a base color all over, all over the lid and the eyes, but it makes it works, it makes it worse for blending for me at least, um, because, so let's see, like, this is your eyelid. That's, I should draw, I should literally, I should like seriously draw my hand next time. Anyways, just, just visualize that this is like an eyelid, right? And, and if, um, if I apply it like this, on my eyelid, then it, it, um, it's like it forms or it molds easier into the contours of your eye, your natural eye shape better than say the GS1, which is like this. Uh, but the GS1 is actually better at applying like crease shade or blend blending because it's like mine is rounded at the top, but I know some people have like pointed ones. And um, yeah, this one is just not not as good at blending. Oops, I had it out of focus. Anyways, uh, lastly we have the MB102, which is a blush brush on, oops, sorry. It, I have to like focus it every time, so sometimes it'll be out of focus. Um, the MB102, which is a blush brush right here. It's made out of dyed Sokoho hair 
and the hair quality doesn't seem very good when compared to other Fude Cafe's dyed soko ho. It's it's actually the hairs are actually like wavy. I've only used this like once, and you can I can already see like when I first got it and washed it, I was like oh, the hair quality is like not that good, but um, it is definitely uh, very similar to the Mac One Two Nine. But it's softer so if you like that shape then I would actually recommend this one and um, yeah the hair okay so like comparing to MAC hair quality this one's obviously a lot better but when compared to other food aid companies the hair is just like I, I guess it's kind of like mid-tier you know it's not it's not like the worst I've ever tried but it's not the best either I don't I don't think there's a Kumana food aid company that is that bad that I've tried <laughs> Maybe, okay, this one might be the worst, but whatever. Um, it's not the softest brush for sensitive skin. And even though CD Japan ranks it a seven out of 10 in terms of softness, for sensitive skin in the winter, it feels like a five. And yeah, um, I would say the standout from the brushes are definitely the CMP527 on the left here, the blending brush, and the CMP521 large eyeshadow brush that I no longer own that is shaped like this one. I will link every single brush down below, um, every single Mizuho brush, and hope this was helpful. Thank you so, for, so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!